After a quick turnaround and a heaping helping of relief for quite a few marbles that made it through to this week of the Marble Survival 100, we are back with a brand new track. Different obstacles in a different order. My goodness, look, there's, there's hex nuts hanging down off of that thing. That's terrifying. Well, either way, hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Our competitors have seen a little bit of everything over the course of the 63 races that we have done. Some of these are familiar. I see that we have added a couple of different ones. Look at that, the Chaos Tubes, the Spinning Maces. Side Sweepers, Fidget Spinner Masher, and the Spinning Spider, all familiar to us. A bit of a wedge to start. And then they all come together. Ends up being a bit like jousting when they shoot off of those red turns. It is the Ghost Marble. Back behind, that's always a somewhat good sign that uh, the Ghost Marble isn't in front of too many of our competitors. Look at that clock spring just sitting there menacingly. I don't know if there's a way to get to it, but I wouldn't put it past some of our competitors to find a way, given how the last few weeks have gone. The Limers go under the swatter and hit square on against the maces, but do not trigger them. When will they get going? There comes the swatter. Thankfully, the snowball is not underneath of it this time. That Oceanic's well back off the pack. You can see how the teams are taking it very carefully this time around. I think this last week, ooh, this last week really threw a curveball at them, and they are happy just to get down to the bottom of this one safely, more so than seeing where they finish in the order. Kind of like a finishing bell as they go across. How pleasant. Oceanics have made up a few spots. That is a plus for them. Snowballs hit on that green peak, and they will cross the line last. Are there any DNFs farther up the course? No. Snowball gets last behind Rezzy and Jump. Diego, Slime Lime, and Swax lead the way. Now 17 points for the winner of each race this week. Of course, all the points from last week reset to zero as we come into this brand new week of competition. It is week 10. 14 survivors left. And we can fit them all on one screen for the first time. No panning this time. So, if you are in the bottom half of the order, all right, dust off. Approach this one with a bit more vigor tomorrow because these marbles will be doing it all again in less than 24 hours' time. How will they analyze at their team meetings tonight to attack this course tomorrow? Yesterday seemed to be the most cautious that our teams have ever attacked an opening race in a week. I think with memories of last week still fresh on their minds, but now you have to feel that they will get down to business here in round two of week 10. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Race 65 is upon us. And what we saw yesterday was a rather complex track in places. Others, it's so fast you really don't have time to think. The marbles let themselves get spread out. They did not take any terribly dangerous lines. A few risks were thrown in there. Indigo Stars, Limers, and Bumblebees led the way. Raspberry Racers and Snowballs currently sit in our bottom two, but plenty of time for them to recover before elimination. Down they come, onto that wedge, and then it swings them around into each other. You really don't have a lot of time to think before you enter this slalom back and forth around these pyramids. Then through these tubes that are new to the course. You may have heard me mention them just yesterday. They are known as the Chaos Tubes. Down the ball bearings into the clock spring. Oh, look at that. Oh, I see. Marbles can go under that wall and hit the clock spring that way. There's quite a bit of debris in there that also can get tripped. Here goes the Maces for the first time this week. Our 
hit for the Raspberry Racers. Oh, two, three hits, four hits. It continues to go. There goes Snowballs trying to get around. Oh my goodness, I believe that's Minty Maniacs. They have been hit at least four times. Have they escaped yet? Looking at the fidget spinners. Now down here to the bottom of the course. It'll be Thunderbolts crossing the line first. Indigo Stars come next. The little jumpers in a nice race across the line. He's still waiting to see. Minty Maniacs, they're clear up there. Oh, and then they get an extra hit from the fidget spinner. The Maces did their job. And the Minty Maniacs limp across the line. Oh, look, we've got two marbles that are stuck right next to each other. It's Limers and Mellow Yellow. So two zeros on the board. That actually saves Minty Mint a handful of points. Coming in now behind Bonbon bon and Snowdrift up in 10th. Shock, Diego, Jump, and Swax are our top four across the line. So Minty Maniacs, they managed to avoid the bottom two. In fact, the other teams that got zeros, they have as well. Chocolatiers and Snowballs sit down there, nine points to six, respectively, with now five races to go this week. Good job, Indigo Stars, Diego. 17 points and 15 points. Just two other teams getting two double-digit points finishes in the first two rounds. That's the kind of consistency you need if you're going to survive late into the Marble Survival 100. Amazing that as we near the 70% mark in the Marble Survival 100, there are still so many traps out here, many that are repeated over the weeks, that our team still have not managed to master. Case in point, the Swinging Maces. Yesterday delivered quite a few harsh jolts of reality to several teams, including Minty Maniacs, who finished last across the line but were bailed out by a couple of DNFs higher up the course. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. It just speaks to the complexity of this event. You would think the Marbles would be able to navigate around some of these obstacles, but once you throw all of these other variables in there, of their competitors, of an ever-changing set of circumstances, down through which they race, you begin to appreciate just what goes in to being a top-tier marble athlete. Down they come, no real advantage on either side of the wedge, but it's how you race for impact that really makes a difference. Down they come, Minty Maniacs holding in third for right now, trying to get by Thunderbolts, who were up there at the front yesterday. There goes one of the ball bearings. Crafty moves there by Minty Maniacs to get by. Same thing with Thunderbolts. Everybody else not so lucky. Down comes that debris past the clock spring. That first week, I wasn't sure if those were solid walls, but no, you can go right under them. Thankfully, it is not too coiled, storing a lot of energy. Several tentative bumps of the swatter, but here comes the mace. Rangers trying to get by. A couple that were knocked forward from it. Those are in the mix. Limers, they're getting sent backwards. They're trapped on this bottom side, going into that red wedge three times, four times now. Are they going to get hit again? Yes, but they managed to get out of it. That's one of the little pieces of debris that is currently leading the way here. Oh, that was a solid one from that fidget spinner. Off that spring, past the clock spring we come. Raspberry Racers get the win. Thunderbolts with another strong showing. Chocolatiers, I believe, came in third. There's Minty Maniacs just tipping the ghost marble at the line. Farther on back. Rangers coming across. Limers are stuck. Just out of the blue waves. They are caught. That is our only DNF, the reserve of the Limer, Slime Lime. Captain of Team Primary comes across the line last. It's Rezzy Shock, two captains in Bon Bon and Jump, and Swax, the reserve of the Bumblebees, rounding out the top five. Up top, Thunderbolts take over the lead from the Indigo Stars, who had been at the front just six points. That knocked them down one position. Bumblebees still the only team. Now at this point, to get that double digit in every race, they sit in third. It's Limers and Snowballs at the back. Limers, two straight zeros. That is just a trapdoor 
speedway down to the bottom of the scoring pylon. They've got to get that ship righted if they hope to climb out of the bottom two as we get in to the midway point of week number 10. Ready for round 67 in the Marble Survival 100. We cruise down round 66 yesterday. Today, we start to get later in the week. And I love that late in the week anticipation, the apprehension of what could happen in the remaining rounds, what has to happen, what needs to happen. If you are in the bottom two, oh so much that can go wrong or redemption that can find you Moving on to next week. Nobody is safe because this marks the midway point of week number 10. Thunderbolts and Indigo Stars lead the way over Bumblebees and Jungle Jumpers. Limers and Snowballs sit down in the bottom two. Limers riding a two-race zero streak. Not the kind of consistency that you want to see. Off we go. More of the field taking that top line. A couple blasting right through what they anticipated as being a collision. Team Primary, I think, was one of them that went way up on the opposite side. It's Minty Maniacs and Raspberry Racers that cross now and drop the ball bearings. Do they get in front of them? Yes, they do, and leave them quivering on the magnets behind. There go the small traps from the chaos tubes. That is what they can do. The field, most of the way, is in front. Chocolatiers have gained ground and now move into the top spot trying to get by the maces oh look at this minty maniacs are stuck on the mace they need somebody to trigger this thing but then of course what happens if you are on the receiving end of it everybody else is being careful and they are not triggering the mace i do not believe that the minty maniacs are free at this point we'll have to keep watching look on the top the inset screen there i think we've got somebody stuck is that jungle jumpers nope they get nudged and they are going once again. I believe Team Primary was the helping hand. Finishers across the line down here. As I take a peek well up to the top of that screen. Oh, I think the fidget spinner sent the ghost marble backwards. And then the ghost marble got that sprong noise that you heard. Waiting for our final finishers. Getting caught having to go the long way around that spider spinner. And there comes Team Primary after an eventful run. The mace never moved. That is good for a lot of the field, but not great for the Minty Maniacs who are caught under it. They are our only DNF. Slime Lime, Yella, and Saucer, they win the day. That was quite a gap back to Team Primary. The gap up front is getting razor thin. Thunderbolts still lead, but only by two points over both Indigo Stars and the Bumblebees. Raspberry Racers are creeping up closer to them, but they've got Mellow Yellow and Purple Rockets right on their heels. Limers joining in as well. At the bottom of the order, Minty Maniacs and Snowballs. What a change there for the Limers. Earned 17 points to jump all the way up to seventh. Three races to go this week for our 14 survivors who will make it past round 70. For the Machiavellian horror that is the spinning maces, most teams regard it actually spinning as being the most dangerous part of its being. However, yesterday in round 67, the Minty Maniacs found out that stationary, it can be just as dubious as when it is moving. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Yes, it was the Maniacs who got stuck on the leading mace yesterday. It never got triggered, so they never got free. There are a few races left, however, in the week for them to continue to ascend up the standings. Right now, they're in the bottom two with the snowballs. Well, Rangers on the outside of the bottom two for now. Thunderbolts, Indigo Stars, Bumblebees, Raspberry Racers, they are doing well with three events to go this week. Who will find themselves safe first? And will it happen today or tomorrow?
down we come once again in the race to survive. Who begins their descent first? And who is far back behind? Well, right now it is the Maniacs who are toward the back of the field. They are not back there entirely. Up front, Purple Rockets trying to dance away, as are the O-Rangers. There come one of the ball bearings. The second one is delayed. That could be trouble. Oh, an interesting position for that ball bearing, too. Back right. But it really only provides a minuscule amount of bother to the Oceanics. A glancing blow for the O-Rangers. Off of the mace, it quivers, but that was not the trigger spring. That's on the top side. So far, everybody is opting to go on the lower air. Sweepers. The Gauss arrow triggered, but I don't know that it hit anybody. One of the small balls from the Chaos Tubes. That is leading the way right now. Doesn't count. And O'Rangers, they're having all kinds of trouble getting through that very technical sector. And they've lost the lead. The Maniacs, they are coming forward. Look, we've got finishers already. But look, there are a couple of marbles that are still fairly high on the course there. They are really taking their time. Oh, one of them got a hard hit from the Fidget Spinner and went on the top side. Dropping low now, we get a look. Who was that? Ah, it was Team Primary. Raspberry Racers were the other marble, and look, there's somebody else up there. Is that the Ghost Marble? It might be. Yes, it is, the Ghost Marble. Really taking its time. So Bon Bon wins over Mandarin, Slime Lime, Saucer, and Swax. C, Arup, and Rezzy are back there. So was Jump from the Jungle Jumpers and Snowdrift. What does this do for our overall standings? Double digit finishes all the way for the Bumblebees. They're the only team to be achieving that this week. And their lead is now one point over Thunderbolts and Indigo Stars who are knotted on 53 apiece. Team Primary and Minty Maniacs are tied at 26 and Snowballs at the bottom of the order at 23. Nobody's safe today, interestingly. That could come in the penultimate event of the week tomorrow. Will your team find their name in green at the end? You know, I saw somebody comment the other day that as we get deeper into this Marble Survival 100 and the field gets a bit smaller, middle of the pack finishes just aren't going to do anymore. The cream has to rise to the top and you have to claim those points when they are on offer because the margins get much slimmer as we go along. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. The Thunderbolts have done just that for the first part of the week, but it's been the Bumblebees who have been the paradigm of consistency as they've continued with double digit points finishes every single round. There you can see it right there. Three straight 10s, an 11 and a 13 before that. That's just enough to get them a one point lead in the overall championship. Minty Maniacs and the Snowballs are back there in the bottom two, but that back two spot is pretty close in points. There are several teams that are just one misstep away from landing there with one race to go before elimination and down we come. A very late entry by the Jungle Jumpers but then a crafty exit for that opening dive and briefly they were not in last. There go the Chaos Tubes. That was a great view of how they are triggered. You bump up against them and all of a sudden their contents empty. And oh yeah, those big ball bearings that are known to deliver hits, well suddenly you're having to watch out for them in the midst of all of these other things rolling in front of you. Up front, Mellow Yellow trying to get away, but now they are stuck on that snow cloud beyond the maces. The Minty Maniacs are caught on the mace again! Is anybody going to trigger it this time? Deja vu for the Minty Maniacs! And I do not know that it has gotten going again. I don't hear any noises, and we haven't seen any replays. Oh, did that almost seal the Minty Maniac's fate? What are the odds? Well, coming across the line, it is another great finish for the Bumblebees. I believe they won in a photo finish across the line. Let's look farther up the course here. There are a couple of marbles that are still rolling. In addition to what we saw just there, behind Primary and the Raspberry Racers, we see the Ghost Marble, I believe that's Indigo Stars. Anybody else up there? I don't believe so. Oh, goodness me. The Minty Maniacs have done it again. Their fans in the stands are absolutely bewildered. 
Minty Mint is stuck on the mace and gets another zero. And that will not do their chances of advancement any good. Eight teams are locked in now. The Bumblebees, Thunderbolts, Limers, Indigo Stars, Chocolatiers, Mellow Yellow, Purple Rockets, and O-Rangers. And that was with that late finish by the Indigo Stars. Just two points for Diego. Snowballs and Minty Maniacs, unsurprisingly, sit at the back of the field. But it's only a three-point difference between the Snowballs and the Maniacs. Team Primary, they are one point above those two. Raspberry Racers, Jungle Jumpers, and Oceanics, they are also in danger as we head into round 70 and the elimination round. Do not miss it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more. Race 70. 10 weeks come to a close today. And the Marble Survival 100, as it marches along, two more teams will be eliminated after this round. Eight of our 14 are safe. They will be advancing to next week. For everybody else, however, they are in danger of this being their final outing down this course. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. If you have been sticking with us through all 70 of these races, thank you from the bottom of our hearts, and we hope that this elimination race will deliver you some joy. Hopefully that means your team will have advanced, of course. But uh, if not, well, hopefully you'll still have fun watching whoever makes it from here. As we prepare for the final race of this week, the scores will be reset after this one. Who will advance and who will we leave behind? Coming through that opening dive and the collision, the Minty Maniacs are toward the back of the field. Only the Snowballs trail behind them. The Limers are back there as well. Purple Rockets, Indigo Stars, or Rangers are getting shoved backward. Past the Chaos Tubes, there the top one empties. Now the bottom one does as well. This complicates things for everybody else, and this is not the week that you want to be dealing with this. Raspberry Racers get sent backward on hits with the ball bearings. Most of the Chaos Tube has uh, emptied underneath and is caught back there. Looking up front now. The Maniacs were actually leading briefly. They got by the Mace. Amazingly, after getting stuck on it twice. They are not in the lead, but this would be a great points haul if they continue where they are. They are bunched up with the Jungle Jumpers and the Snowballs down in the bottom lane. The Chocolatiers shoulder the Oceanics out of the way to take P1 up top. Pounding around here, there goes the Fidget Spinner. Twice! For the Minty Maniacs, they get hit, but they manage to get themselves going again. They're trying to make a rush for the line, but they've got the first top five, six, seven finishers across the line. They lose a spot as they bounce off of one of those pyramids. Indigo Stars and Bumblebees come across. They are both safe anyway. Is that Purple Rockets that are caught on the spider? Well, that should help just a tiny bit on the points. But did the Minty Maniacs do enough compared to the competition around them? They got four points. I don't know that that was enough. I'll wait for the official bean counters. Some of the team still doing this by Abacus. It was not enough. And even one or two spots that they would have gotten had they come straight across the line, that probably still would not have been enough. Six points is the gap between them and the Snowballs, and the Snowballs have another three up to non-eliminated Team Primary. We say goodbye to Snowdrift and Minty Mint this week, and our field shrinks down to 12 after round 70, the 10th week of arduous competition in the Marble Survival 100. They will get a brief respite tonight. The track will be completely overdone, and by sunrise tomorrow, we will be ready to race once again. First though, to the victors of the week go the spoils of the podium. Congratulations. The Thunderbolts were actually able to beat the Bumblebees. To the top step, the Bumblebees did not 
get double points in every single race. They lost it on this one, but are still happy with second place. Congratulations to third place, Chocolatiers.